Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN is presented by Negate, the official beer of boxing. Yes, we're back here at the Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino ready for tonight's main event. And we expect action because anytime Francisco Bandido Vargas steps into the ring, he brings his best. And he'll be taking on Rod Salka this evening, a former world title challenger. We're going to take you to the Tecate tale of the tape for these two young fighters or veteran fighters. He comes in with his face covered because he comes in to steal the show, does Bandido Vargas. And here is the Tecate tale of the tape where you will notice that he's got a two inch reach advantage over Rod Salka, but it's Sanka with 58 more rounds fought over their careers and the longer layoff with 77 days longer than Bandido has been in the ring. Joe Martinez is now in the center of the ring, ready for the introduction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, live on ESPN from Fantasy Springs Resort Casino here in Indio, California, it is time for the main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing this scheduled in the lightweight division. Presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Hennessy, Never Stop, Never Settle, and Wad Gear. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the three judges appointed Rudy Barragan, Tony Krabs, and Pat Russell. When the action begins inside the ring, referee in charge, Jerry Cantu. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Indio, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing red, white, and blue, he weighed officially 131 pounds. In 28 professional bouts, his record stands at 24 victories, four defeats, four wins by way of knockout. Fighting out of Benola, Pennsylvania, here is Lightning Rodson! And next, his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with gold. He weighed in 130 pounds even. This veteran has an outstanding record, standing at 24 victories, including 17 knockouts, one defeat, and two bouts even. He is the former WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World from Mexico City, Mexico. Here is El Bandido, Francisco. Gentlemen, you have received your instructions in the dressing room. I want a good, clean, hard fight. You will obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. Yes, Jerry, they will obey your commands at all times. I'm Bernardo Osuna, joined by future Hall of Famer Bernard Hopkins, as well as Beto Duran, who will be bringing us reports from the corners between rounds. Rod Saka is happy to be back in the ring Are you ready? on the big stage. Tanito. And so is Francisco Bandido Vargas, Lincio. who's got Clean. one thing on his mind, like he told Beto, and that's earning another shot at Miguel Berchez and that world title. He's really hungry and he wants to prove tonight that he's renewed and that his eyes are no longer a problem when it comes to cuts behind. Yeah, he did. I mean, not only did he talk serious, but, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to see, uh, you know, how he gets in the rhythm and how fast and, you know, or not that he sticks to the game plan because he seems to get into, like, scraps unnecessarily early. Those cuts open up early and they become a problem. I want to see how he established that early where he's not going to be harmed by any cuts or anything that might hinder his aggressiveness. Vargas trying to land that left hook. Don't say much about the trunks of Saka, but you can read a lot into him if you're observant. You know, Saka has that sort of like, you know, unorthodox style. He throw punches from really like angles you can't prepare or train for. So, Vargas is going to have to adapt to that. He's going to have to get uh, inside, maybe, and try to counter. But he do, Vargas has the reach. I think he should take it spots 
but be accurate with his punches, like now with the one, two, and the one, two, three. He must continue to further the hook at the end of all those punches and combinations. Ratsaka was very clear. He said, I've got my insurance broker's license, so it's either win or retire and go sell insurance for the rest of my life. So he's got a lot at stake tonight. See, but he also has two options, and most fighters I know, yeah. we go to room with one option, and that is to be who we are, and that's fighters. So, you know, I want to see if things get tough. But so how do he react? Do he react where you know, the insurance job is uh, always open for him? Um, when you get pressure like that, you know you got those options. Sometimes when things don't go your way, you might start considering those options sooner than later. Nice jab from Francisco Bandido Vargas, who alongside Joel Diaz has said, they've been making a conscious effort to move a lot more and not be there to be hit because that is part of why he gets cut so easily. He, as Beto Duran mentioned early in the beginning of the program, the surgery that he went through and how the surgeon not only took off the scar tissue, but he had sutures put in from the inside internally as well as externally. That's really what helped his face recover more than ever. Well, I heard what he said and he you know, said it to both of us, but right now, I just see a one-way car going without a reverse. And so it's gonna be hard <laughs> for him to break out of that. And he says, I don't go in there wanting a fight of the year. It just, my opponent brings that out in me and I have to do what I have to do. Former Olympian for Mexico, Mexico as round one comes to an end here at Fantasy Spring. Bernardo Osuna and Bernard Hopkins coming to you from Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino. Rod Salka wants to put that Danny Garcia fight behind him. He says, hey, I'm a 130 pound fighter. That's where I'm fighting tonight. That fight was at 140 pounds, but it was the biggest payday of my career. I had to take that fight. I'm different at 130 pounds, and I know what's at stake for me. He says, the one thing that motivates me more than anything is my trainer, Buzz Garnick, 82 years old, works just as hard in the gym as I do every day. Saka is working extremely hard to, to continue to stay out of the way. And I don't think that's going to be beneficial to him as the fight goes on if it goes longer in deeper waters because he seems to be fighting, you know, more, more, I say, on a survival and fighting not to get knocked down or knocked out, but more than fighting break out of there. Fight. his guy, break. Come on, let's go. Vargas off him. And, you know, whether he's in condition or not, I think at the while, backing up and trying to stay out of the way round by round by round, when you got a guy like Vargas to continue to pressure you, continue to throw body shots. And that folks, as he's just doing now, fight out of the fight I think out. eventually on, he's gonna break through the wall. That's what he's trying to do, and someone who's trying to break through the wall here is Beto Duran, who was in the corner of Bandido Vargas. What was the feeling after the first round, Beto? Calmado, Bernie, calmado, be calm. That's what they told Bandido Vargas. Joel Diaz, his trainer, said he wants to, he's trying to put on a show for everybody that he was pressing the first round. He told them to slow down and realize you have rounds to work with. He said Salka's excited and he could get caught. Stop, 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 Bandido to take his time stop, stop. and find the right punches instead of just trying to throw a punch at one time. Bandido's got a reputation for being in wars. I mean, two fights of the year, that doesn't come easily, but you also end up paying for that in the long run. And that's what Joel Diaz is looking for, you know, taking care of his own fighter because there's always the pressure of expectation to be up. It is definitely is. And also, you know, Saka, I'm watching him. He's not a hard puncher, but he's a sharp puncher. And when you're dealing with Vargas with cuts and scar tissue, it only takes one one of those punches that not really hit the target, but sort of catch the end of the glove where the, where the stitching is at and who calls a cut because the skin of Vargas is very tender from previous matches and, and cuts that he received early on in his career. You know, and actually, Salka mentioned to us the fact that that was part of the plan because he's cut other fighters up throughout fights in his career. And he says, you know, if, if I land the right type of punch, I know that he will cut. So it's very much on his mind, but Bandito's skin holding up so far through the first two rounds here on this main event fight on Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN.
Bandido Vargas was telling us in the fighter meetings, I started boxing at 15, had a long amateur career, and was a late bloomer as a pro, so I feel that helps me. But it's nice when the fans recognize your efforts and your style. That's a bonus for fans to recognize that you leave it all in the ring every time out. And I think that's a great self-description from Bandido Vargas. Yeah, it is, and it's, it's also it's motivation, and also, you know, let him understand that, you know, that had that under your belt in your mind and also an experience, but it can go a long way. And, and it's a confident builder is a confident builder, and you constantly remind yourself of what he just mentioned and earlier to, to us and, and, and that you know fighters meeting. But this is again the pressure that Vargas has continued to pit on Zaka. He's continued to wear him down, or at least try to wear him down. Vargas will want to get him early if he can. Because it's always that what if he cuts early and how he reacts. But he fights even better in Vargas when he's hurt. He's used to being cut. So I don't think it's going to be a factor in his performance. I think it'd be more of uh, soccer trying to want something to happen so he can have a better chance on at least winning the fight or not getting knocked out himself. All right, in the blue corner of Rod Saga, they've got a unique perspective on what the press strategy is to win this fight, Beto. That's what happens in the corner of Rod Saka. It's shh. They don't talk between rounds. They don't talk during the round. They said all their talking is done in camp. Saka comes back to the corner and he tells the trainer what he's doing. Saka's the one that they said will make the own adjustments in his corner. It's basically, hey, you're doing good. How do you feel? That's it. It's very different. It's very quiet over there. Jeb, mira con tu jab. That's quite interesting. And, you know, everybody's got their own way. Buzz Garnick at 82 years old. You can't question what his way of doing things is. But Rod Saka learned the trade from Paul Spatafora, the Pittsburgh kid. He's starting to swell up over the right eye thanks to the left hooks from Bandido Vargas. Whether they speak Saka in his corner or not, he must understand himself or be told that he has to do things a little different or a different strategy. So whatever code that they use, when it has some, not, nothing to do with talking or communicating, then, you know, <laughs> he's out there basically got to figure it out himself because, you know, one thing boxing is about, you do have to figure it out on your own, but to come back to your corner, it does help to get a little advice if you need it. I think it does as well. And sometimes it's not the advice, it's the motivation, the fact that you don't feel so alone out there, at least for three minutes uh, of every round. You have one minute of help, if you will, as round three comes to an end here in India, California. Bandido, te estás aventando mucho con tus golpes, mijo. Mide la distancia para que pegue los golpes sólidos. Ponle, 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 así. Ahí está en la bola. Muy bien, bandido. Muy bien. Me gusta, me gusta el trabajo que estás haciendo. Nomás que te me estás juntando mucho, mijo. Si, si tienes más distancia con tus golpes, el snap, ponle la cubeta para que se escupa todo. Ok, bandido. Hey, que tenga el snap. Especialmente ese, ese cruzado izquierda. Si lo metes, si das vuelta y tal, lo vas a agarrar en la pura quijadita, mijo. Good fight here at Fantasy Springs, but we invite you to join us next Thursday from San Juan, Puerto Rico, where unbeaten Lamont Roach 
will take his 16-0 record to Puerto Rico to take on Orlando Cruz, the former two-time world title contender. And that'll be What's a up, great fight from San Juan, Puerto Rico. You don't want to miss that. Cruz is coming off of a big win over former world titleist Juan Ma Lopez. Break on your own, break. Let go, let go, let go. Run, let go. That's Jason Velez going to be taking on Ryan Garcia on May the 4th, who beat Juan Ma Lopez. Nonetheless, we got great action tonight. Alongside Bernard Hopkins, I'm Bernardo Osuna. Beto Duran giving us key information from the corners. And now you see the pressure of Vargas starting to build on Salka Vihap. Not only building, but he's getting leverage on the right hand that's coming. And he's stalking as he get it to a point where he got position now. Three punch combination. That left hook hurt Zaka to the body. He sort of flinched to the left, and now he's forced to fight back. And you never want to be forced to fight back. He's not doing it on his own terms. He's doing it on Vargas' terms. Yeah, you definitely don't want to let Bandido Vargas come forward without landing something of your own. And in the corner, Joel Diaz was telling Francisco Vargas, it's time for power shots. He said, I want you to clip him with that left hook. If you set him up right, you're going to put him out. Great instructions because he's sitting down on the punches and look what Zaka had. He's on the ropes. He's waiting to get hit with some good power shots. So now you just sit in and you dig to the body and you try to throw an uppercut on right hand. But power shots was great instructions from the corner. And Saka told us, hey, I'm capable of sitting down on my punches, but a lot of times I don't. I know that if I sit down on my punches, I can hurt Bandito Vargas. Let's see if Saka can do the same thing. So they both might have the same plan here in the fourth round as Saka has a nice counter shot to the body, but in order to counter, he had to take a couple from Bandito Vargas. And Vargas has continued to put pressure on him. So if you, Zaka, you thinking that you want to do one thing and you're forced to do another thing, and that is retreat. And that's what Zaka's doing now. He's retreating, but he's not retreating with punches. He's retreating and getting stalked round by round. Bandido Vargas, 33 year old, brought Zaka comes in at 35 years old. But Bandido's been in against the better opposition throughout his career. Had more success. Won a world title. Zaka has nothing on his punches. Those punches are being thrown out there just to try to buy him some time, but he's getting punished in the ring. That was a nice left hook there from Bandido Vargas. Who keeps walking down Ratsalka here. As round four comes to an end, now the right comes to the party as well from Bandido Vargas. Ahorita lo doblaste. Es que tienes que tienes que presionar un poquito más, pero es más efectivo, mijo. No nomás tirar por tirar. Hay que mirar dónde vas a pegar. ¿Okay? Pero todavía estás, estás pegando muy bien. ¿Okay? Bandido Vargas ready to step to the center of the ring for the fifth round of a 10 round scheduled fight against Rod Saka alongside Bernard Hopkins. I'm Bernardo Osuna. there from Bandido Vargas as Salka tries to go with a right to the body. Salka knows he's the underdog. Behind. Yeah, Zaka Corner was saying that he's uh, looking better. He's doing something from the last round. You know, I didn't see it. I mean, I think he's more or less fighting to, to survive 
and really force. He may, I believe he's trying, but he sort of loses the leverage every time he exchange, like we just seen just now. The harder punches are coming from Vargas. He's digging to the left hand to the body, and the punches are affecting Zaka. All right, uh, Beto Duran covered the Phil Jackson era with the Lakers, where he would allow them to silently figure things out. It seems that the Phil Jackson treatment has ended in the Salka corner, Beto. Well, they told me something. They didn't tell Salka this, but they said that this is the fight they expected, but they don't like that Salka is trying to get in there and mix it with Vargas. The game plan was box and move, and then you see the right side of Salka's face is turning red. They said they don't like that. He hasn't thrown a jab enough for them that he needs to throw a jab. If not, he's going to get redder. It's going to get redder. It's going to get swollen. and. It's going to become a target for Francisco Vargas, who once again now lands the overhand right. He says, the right side's looking bad. Let's make sure the left side doesn't look clean either. Zaka took too many strong punches early in the round to be able to withstand moving and just trying to win or at least win rounds on points. Vargas has continued to stalk, continue to beat that body. And he, look, he's making Zaka force the fight. Every now and then, every now and then, Zaka has his moments where he throws four, five punch combination, but Vargas doesn't respect that because the power is not there. I mean, we knew this was gonna be a power punch battle because that's Bandido Vargas' style. But when you look at Rod Zaka, he's only landed two of 89 jabs thrown until this point of the fight. That's why Beto was mentioning the disappointment in the corner in terms of establishing distance, establishing the range. And here, he sits on his punches and catches Bandido Vargas coming in and stops him in his tracks. But he, can he continue? Can he continue? Which he hasn't, Bernard. He stopped. He threw those five, six punches. And he's trying to get a breather. And right now, he's paying for that. So he shot his load, and now he's getting pummeled. When, oh, he got hit with a right uppercut. That's a right uppercut that drops. Rod Salka, it came after a low blow. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You okay? Perfect. All right. Fuck. Rod Salka not ready to go back to selling insurance quite yet. Let's see if he gets to the midway point of this fight at the end here of round number five. Ron, how you doing? You want to keep on going? All right. WBC Featherweight World Championship. Be sure to tune in and catch JoJo Diaz. Hey, Beha, break down the knockdown for us. This is where, this is how you set up the knockdown. You set on your punches and you dig the left hand, but the right upper cut off the right hook to the body, and that established what? It established a crumble, make him go down. It was a three punch combination, one from the left, and then the right hand up and up in an uppercut position, which made uh, Zaka go down. So dominant fifth round for Francisco Bandido Vargas, who sees the sixth round without any blood of his own trickling down his face, which is already a victory in and of itself. So all that has to add to his confidence level, Bihar, because he told us, hey, I now step into the ring not worried about cuts, but it's one thing to say it, and it's another thing to actually live it and do it. Well, one thing for sure, it's not actually bleeding, but he do got a couple of bruises, a couple of, you know, all wounds is starting to show a little redness that is Vargas, but it's not affecting him where he can't see. There's no blood dripping right now, but he still continues to what? Stalk, throw that stiff jab right in the middle of his stomach. And you know, the pressure is what started the knock, the started to the knockdown. And don't look for him to do anything different because he's been winning every round this way. And he's making Zaka retreat. All right, Beto Duran was in the red corner with Joel Diaz and Francisco Vargas. What's the plan? Acabalo, finish him. That's the plan from Joel Diaz. He said, do not let Salka breathe. He sent Vargas out there to finish the fight. He said, he's hurt, he's going backwards. You can take him out. Yeah, with a big overhand right, 
Bandido Vargas is attempting to do just that. Then he digs down to the body once again. Look at the side of Salka and his back b-hop. That right. means... Red, Oof. red, red, back from the ropes. The ribs from the left hook that he continued to do just what he just did. Sipping that left hook right there into the ribs of the rib cage on the liver. And, and Zaka right now, he just, just arm punching. And you know what? He's fighting Vargas as much as he can, backing up, but knowing that he can't keep him off because not only is the power there, he's been hit with some big shots early. Bandido Vargas giving us the type of performance we expected, looking to finish the fight here in the sixth round after dropping Rod Saka in the fifth. Saka said, I am a natural 130 pounder, so my resistance is better, my power punching is gonna be there. That we have not seen, but his chin has definitely been there despite the knockdown. Well, that's because Vargas haven't really set him up like he's supposed to. When he do get him in, in trouble, he throw punches like this with combinations, like that left hand. The last punch you do that I've had, that stiff straight jab to the stomach. He must shorten the punches up, not be too wide, and he must look for the right target at the right time. Vargas is chopping him down, stalking him in round number six. Saka showing a lot of heart, and Vargas just doing what he does. Freddie Roach named him El Bandido because he stole from his fighters in the gym, and now Saka's bleeding. I don't, I don't want I As we were between rounds, the corner of Rod Salka basically stopped the fight. They did not like what they were seeing, the inflammation under the left eye, and that's exactly why Buzz Garnick and Rod Salka decided that this fight could no longer continue. Let's take a look exactly how it happened and listen in to what the corner said. Moments before that, it was Rod Salka Sr. who was telling him, I'm not gonna let you get hurt. He knew what he was up against, B-Hop, and I think he made the right call. Yeah, because the fighter, we, is not gonna make that call ourselves. And we're gonna go out on that shield. He, he was ready to go out on the shield. He was ready to go out on the shield. But you know, his corner did the right thing. And you know, he was getting hit with some good shots, not only early in the fight, but even going through the middle and of course, it was going to get worse, so good call. All right, Joe Martinez is in the center of the ring with the official time of the stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number six, this bout comes to a close. We have your winner by KO victory from Mexico City, Mexico, El Bandido, Francisco. Guys, with a six round technical knockout, he gets the stoppage against veteran Rod Salka. An impressive finish for the fighter out of Mexico City who comes back to Fantasy Springs, a place where he lost his title to get back on track. Good job. Hey, Beto Duran is in the center of the ring now with Francisco El Bandido Vargas. Oscar De La Hoya giving a couple of last minute congratulations. And Beto, what does Bandido have to say? Primero Bandido, felicidades, pero Oscar, what did you see tonight in Bandido Vargas? I, I feel that he's back. He had a little rust in him, but he looked great. He looked good. Um, and uh, now he's ready for, uh, for the big stage. This is the bandido that everybody expected. Uh, absolutely. And uh, he was against uh, a fighter who came to fight, who was game. And uh, Rod Salka is, uh, is a fighter who has a lot of experience, 
but uh, El Bandido is back and uh, we're ready to, uh, to put him in the big fights once again where he performs at his best, so we're, we're excited. Thank you, Oscar Bandido. Felicidades. Dijiste que ibas a venir y poner un buen show para la gente. You said you were going to come here and put on a good show for the people. ¿Cómo sientes que hiciste? How do you feel like you did? Eh, bueno, pues me siento muy contento. Hicimos un gran trabajo todo mi equipo, los manejadores, entrenadores, Joel, Toño, el preparador físico, Dero. Eh, hicimos un gran trabajo, estoy muy contento. Eh, quería darles una buena pelea a toda la afición que vino a ver la pelea y espero que les haya gustado esta actuación. I felt like I wanted to put on a good show. I did that thanks to everybody in my corner, the trainers, Tonyo and Joel. I'm glad all the fans that came out and hopefully I give you guys a good show. The heat is antes de la pelea que querías una revancha con Miguel Burchell. Before the fight, you said you wanted a rematch with Miguel Burchell, who beat you in this same ring. Estás listo para eso? Estamos listos. Queremos esa pelea, esa revancha. Eh, yo le di la oportunidad. Esperemos que él me la dé. Y aquí estamos listos. I want the rematch. I'm ready and let's go. Bernardo Suna, el bandido, with the victory tonight. They used to call him El Bandido at Freddie Roach's gym because he'd go in and spar and then take those guys out. And so today he did exactly that against Rod Salka and Oscar De La Hoya mentioned it, your partner in Golden Boy Promotions. He's ready for the big fights and Bandido well, Vargas proved next, that tonight. Eric Rodriguez, yes, let's go. I'm ready to line him up now. <laughs> line him up. Let's see if we can get another fight of the year. Francisco Bandido Vargas taking pictures in the ring. Let's take a look at the Tecate final punch stats for the evening as Bandido Vargas. You're gonna take a look, just go all the way down to power punches. That's what matters. He threw 239, landed 92 of them. Saka threw over 300 and landed 71. That's what this fight was all about. The efficiency though, 39% for Francisco Bandido Vargas. Big win for the Mexican fighter. And when we return, we'll have the debut of a second generation fighter, Romo Caballero who makes his pro debut in his hometown of Indio, California on Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN.